It's not acceptable to call me a nigger. To call me a chink. To call me a fag. To call me a kike. It is not acceptable to call me a retard or call yourself or your friends retarded. Welcome one and all to the fifth episode of Tumblrisms. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, ableism. And if you don't know what ableism is, it's probably because you hate the retarded. Though I probably shouldn't have said hate the retarded, because then that makes me a terrible person too. Look at the influence you're having on me. Oh god. I need to associate with better people. That's what Tumblr's for. It's going to educate us. Because we're shitlords, and we need to be taught a lesson. And there's no better place to be taught a lesson than in the hallowed halls of Tumblr. Now, the format for this particular episode is going to be a little different. Before, in the previous four, we had one specific Tumblr we went to who was able to kind of guide us along and teach us what we were learning about that day. Uh, for this one, there's all sorts of craziness everywhere. So we're going to be looking at a bunch of Tumblrs. And when I say a bunch of Tumblrs, oh, you're going to love where this goes. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Because I was pretty amazed myself at a few, a few of the Tumblrs I particularly... <laughs> You're going to like it. Let's just say that. You're going to like it. So let's uh, let's dip our, our toe into the ableism pool and find out first what the fuck this ableism thing is. And what better place to start our little journey of exploration than this is ableism.tumblr.com, which has a nice little info blurb about just what ableism is, located directly below the handicapped parking sign, which is below the category of fat and disabled, which I'm sure is quite uh, quite a barrel of laughs, but we're going to we're going to skip over that. We're going to exercise a little bit of that privilege we all have and just jump over that handicapped person cuz god knows their legs are never going to work again. And we're going to read this uh, this description. This is ableism. Ableism is a form of discrimination and social prejudice. Are you questioning whether or not something is ableist? Ask a disabled person. Heck, ask multiple disabled people. Able-bodied people, you do not get to decide what is ableist. The privileged never get to determine what qualifies as oppression. This blog will attempt to display disabled people's opinions on ableism. Submission of ableism you have experienced or witnessed are welcome, and so are examples of ableism you have seen on social media sites. If you have taken a medication and or visited a doctor and wish to submit a review, please feel free to submit that as well. There is a general trigger warning for the content on this blog. If I neglect to put a trigger warning on something that needs it, please let me know so I can fix it. I usually like to reblog a lot of the commentary on posts. Well, sadly, this definition really hasn't helped us pin down what that ableism thing is. Maybe if we, I don't know, maybe if we explore the user base, they can help point us in the right direction. Let's let's take a look at a few of the posts that are that are tagged with ableism and see if we can be enlightened. Flowers and Femme post, things able-bodied people should do before using the word invalid. Stop. Don't. Ever. Hashtags UG and disability. Well, clearly she's disgusted with the disabled. Why would you use those hashtags otherwise? It's a very brave position to take on Tumblr, but I'd like to, I'd like to know a little bit more about Flowers and Femme. After all, we're trying to pin down this uh, specific definition, so let's find out exactly who this person is. About me. I figure I should have an About Me page, so this is me. My name is Hannah. Any pronouns go, but I get she all the time, IRL, so I'd rather not hear them here. Also, if you call me Miss or Ma'am or Lady, I'll curl up and cry. Don't ask, it's complicated. You can find more of my face here. I'm a queer femme living in the Sunshine State. I'm currently a college student at UCF. I love makeup, sewing, and covering things in glitter. I'm high femme, so you'll see a lot of that on here, but I try to keep things varied. Also, I'm chronically ill, and write about that sometimes. I usually tag it, chronic pain stuff. If it doesn't interest you, and you'd like to tumbler, savor it. Privileges, I'm white, thin, and middle class. If I ever fuck up, shoot me a message to let me know, okay? Okay! Autistic Will Graham writes, Just a reminder that unless you're physically disabled, you are not allowed to use the word crippled, because then it's an ableist slur, and you're ableist trash. Bye. Hashtags ableist slur CW. Disability. Even if you're mentally disabled, you can't reclaim the. And the About Me section says, My name is Madeline, but you can call me Mads, if you'd like. I'm just a college student studying ASL English interpreting in America. My sexuality is queer. I identify as non-binary, so please use they, their, them pronouns. He, him, his is okay too, but not her, she, hers. I'm aromantic, and most of my ships are QP. I'm autistic, and blog a lot about that. So yeah, who would have thought autistic William Graham would be autistic? That is a surprise. Next up we have Froki Appreciation Blog. Literally, if you are not disabled, disordered, ill, you have no right to argue with disabled, disordered, ill people on what words are demeaning, slurs, etc. to disabled, disordered, ill people. Literally, fuck off. 
I keep seeing able-bodied people, often in ableism tags, doing this to non-abled people. Literally, fuck off! You are garbage! And looking at their page, you can already see they are heavily disabled. This person, obviously, is retarded. The Pokemon and Sonic might clue you into that, but I particularly like this post on February 2nd, 2014. I have old child pics of me on my training toilet while also on my computer desk. I was already a smart kid. Apparently in his world, shitting while you're on the computer is a fucking achievement. Somebody contact JP and tell all those neats. Pissing of those coke bottles is the mark of a fucking genius. Trans Head Cold had this to say. Anonymous asked, I think most people use alcoholism as an insult because alcoholism is associated with being abusive and stuff. Hmm. It's almost like people are viewing others as dangerous predators based on neurotype, also known as ableism. Ask a trans head cold a question. Hashtag alcohol anon ask. My name is Kylie, and I'm the world's largest rodent. Pronouns they, them, there, or am ear. And there's a, a donate button located directly below the currently reading nothing. What a surprise. Who would have seen that coming based on the spelling of that introduction? No capitalization, a word that makes no fucking sense. Who cares? And uh, uh, who needs periods? Apparently, apparently not the brony. Ghostlove chimes in with, PSA, the phrase, were you dropped on your head as a baby or something, is incredibly ableist. As a parent of a child who was indeed dropped on his head and who has a lifelong medical condition affecting the whole use of the right side of his body due to the traumatic brain damage, I take it personally, and I will speak up if you use it in my presence. Hashtags, we chum, parenting, personal. Well, I'm interested to find out more about ghost love. Let's, uh, let's take a gander. Quinn, 20-something, trans dude, parent, mentally ill, disabled, feminist, activist, writer, advocate, vice chair and voluntary area coordinator for Chatterbox LGBT group. All views here are my own and do not represent the organization I volunteer for. Well, fancy that. A mentally ill transsexual. Also, I do believe they are disabled. After all, they put mentally ill and feminist down, and as we all know, that's redundant. Maybe the dropping the kid on the head is hereditary, and their, their father slash mother slash trans other drop them down the stairs as well. Would explain that god-awful fucking mohawk. Slither in and get comfortable rights. I love being triggered and victimized by ableist oppressors who refuse to recognize their privilege and claim their hurt feelings from being called out as ableist are just as valid as my feelings from being oppressed and having slurs used in my presence, especially right before bed, when I should be asleep. Hashtags, that shit is now removed from my Facebook. Gotta love friends showing their true colors. About Dallas. They them there, 21 years old, Canadian, living in Delaware, gender queer, transgender, pansexual, Cerebral palsy, middle-class, white, undergraduate student, artsy scientist. Well, that was a mistake. It was not as helpful as I was hoping. If only there was a, a Tumblr or Tumblrers that could point us to what ableist terms are. I'm starting to get an idea, but I, I still have some questions. Maybe somebody could clear it up for me. Well, of course, what better place to go to educate yourself on privilege than feministdisney.tumblr.com? Can you give us a list of ableist terms? I know the basic ones. Stupid, retarded, lame, dumb, etc. Or is there a link? I don't quite understand ableism yet because I study words and how they morph into different meanings over time. But at the same time, I don't want to offend anyone or use problematic language. Anonymous. Feminist Disney responds, Just so you know, all I do when I get questions like this is Google them, and then go through with my own logic and make sure I agree slash add things. Which isn't to say it's wrong to ask, because I realize that once I blog about these things, I become some sort of amateur authority about them. But just saying, sometimes there's a quicker way than waiting 10 hours for me to reply. Crazy nuts, insane, psycho, bipolar, etc. Bipolar when used to just describe something that isn't the disorder. You see a lot of that on Tumblr. Idiot. Here is a post discussing multiple words, exactly how and why to go about replacing ableist language, along with suggestions for alternative words and phrasing. And just in case you were curious, that link goes to whatprivilege.com to a post entitled Replacing Crazy for Ableism and Preciseness of Language. It's possible some words aren't listed here, or that we realize that in time that more words are ableist. It's a learning process. I would always just evaluate where your words find their power. Are they powerful because you're specifically pointing out why someone is wrong? You're being a privileged, inconsiderate person for saying X. Or are they powerful because they hearken back to a derogatory way of saying things slash seeing people and thrive off the comparison? Sarah Palin, you are so psycho-crazy. Edit, sometimes phrasing or dialogue can be ableist even if it doesn't include ableist terms. 
Like, if you think it's too aggravating for you to have subtitles on a theater movie so that a deaf person can enjoy them too, you might not be using ableist terminology, but it's an ableist type of statement. So now it seems like we're gaining ground. We've got a, a little bit of a list to work with, but let's see if we can expand that a little bit more. Let's see if we can find a, a post that helps to kind of explain exactly how many words out there are ableist. Not perfect. These are ableist words, trigger word, ableist slurs. Stupid, crazy, dumb, lame, insane, moron, spaz, numbskull, dimwit, or anything with wit. Weak as in that's weak, retarded, retard, hysterical, idiot, cretin, gimp, cripple, psycho, she, he is so bipolar, she, he is so OCD, schizo, lunatic, loony, batshit, there is some debate about this, but bottom line is most people couple it with crazy, so the ableism comes into play. Nuts, same as batshit. Mad, not angry mad, crazy mad. Derpy, ditzy. I'm so ADHD today, or variations thereof. It's like I have Tourette's or something, or variations thereof. Tagged disability language ableism. So it would appear that it's not just language that's ableist, but it's thoughts too. Like in that first example of uh, not wanting subtitles in a theater movie because that would that would disadvantage a deaf person, but also using any language related to being insane or having a mental disability apparently is ableist. I still I still wish we could get a little bit more. Uh, there's got to be a better authority out there somewhere. Oh, I know. Shut up, Team Wolf Fandom. Tumblr. Com. That's the authority we need. It should go without saying, but trigger word for ableist words on this page. Ableism, for those that don't know, is discrimination and or prejudice against people with disabilities. In the lovely world we live in, ableism is institutionalized in our society, basically meaning from birth people with disabilities are marginalized by societal and governmental institutions. Here at Shut Up Team Wolf Fandom, this term is going to extend to all kinds of disabilities, including mental illness, disabilities, prejudice against which is sometimes called sanism. So now that you officially know what ableism is, it should be pretty obvious that slurs dehumanize other people with disabilities are pretty awful. The problem is, so many of these words have become a part of our vernacular to the point where saying them is almost an unconscious reaction to some situations. Trying to cleanse your personal dictionary of ableist slurs can be a difficult thing, especially when there doesn't seem to be another word that carries the same weight and colloquial meaning. But here's the thing, using words can make you an ass, so if you learn that it's inappropriate to say these things and continue to do so, you are an ass. These words are abusive and harmful, and any time you use them, you further the marginalization of disabled people. I'm glad to know that Shut Up Team Wolf Fandom really takes this seriously. I wonder who runs this great Tumblr. Obviously, they're on point. They must be quite the individual. I will suffer no humans. Ian23, Slytherin, INFP, Hot NNT Mess, Hopeless Fanaby, It Its, Pronouns or Bust, Caution, Incest and cannibalism. I like angels, aliens, intersectional feminism, mad pride, BDSM, non-Euclidean emotions, blue and orange morality, intra-guild predation, consensual tentacle sex. Let me just, let me say that one more time. Consensual tentacle sex. And snuggling. Well, he's a romantic. You know what? I think, uh, I think now we need to have a talk between myself and you, the viewer, because this is the, the fifth episode we've done of Tumblrisms, and I think you're noticing a trend, or at least you should have noticed a trend between all those posts that I showed you and those Tumblrs that we just went over. I mean, what was the common theme in every single one of them? Everybody was special. They were as far from normal as you could possibly be. They were the anti-mundane. They were transsexual, they were gender fluid, they were aromantic, polyamorous ponykins. They, you know, anything but normal, because God help you if you're normal. That's not interesting anymore, is it? Everybody needs to be unique and stand out. Every single one of those people, every single one of those posts was a college-age kid or somebody in college. They were transsexual or bisexual or any sexual other than straight or just gay. They were activists for every kind of organization you could imagine. And they all love the idea of self-flagellation because that's so great, because they're just so guilty of imagined crimes. And that's what ableism is. Now, yeah, when you get down to it, when it's, when it's just at the end of the day and you're really thinking about it, being a dick to somebody is being a dick to somebody. You don't need to brand that as something. You don't need to create a new term for it. Calling somebody a retard who actually is mentally handicapped might be a little bit cruel. 
but trying to say that using words that were actually created to define a condition is wrong or that using words that happen to fit a circumstance or a context is wrong is just silly. Using words like crazy and insane and stupid are not going to make somebody who is retarded feel bad. They aren't going to be aware of your fucking conversations when you're not around them. However, these people would have you think that just by uttering those phrases, that somewhere out there, some autistic child is getting beaten because you said retard as a punchline to a fucking joke in a bar. There's this term out there that's called Poe's Law, which basically states that there's a point where parody becomes so close to the extreme forms of something that they're indistinguishable. And that's really what's happened to social justice, and especially on Tumblr when you look at it. You cannot tell a fake parody from the real fucking thing anymore, because these people have gone so far off the fucking deep end that it's just, it, it, you can't, there's no difference. You cannot tell anymore. They have been co-opted by the hypersensitive. In fact, if you want to see a, a particular example of this happening in real life, go look at Occupy Wall Street. What did you have with Occupy Wall Street? You had a movement that was dedicated towards the idea of removing corruption in government and finance. They wanted some banking reforms. They wanted to end some political dirty dealings. Sounds great. Who would disagree with that? What, what group of Republicans or Democrats would say, no, I want corruption. No, I want illegal activity. Nobody's for that. So Occupy Wall Street had a good platform to start with. And you got all these people gathering up, and yeah, there were some, some hipsters and some hippies and uh, liberal pot-smoking retards, but for the most part, they were on point. For the beginning, they were. But what happened as time went on? They got co-opted. They got co-opted by people who came in with their own agendas and their own ideas, and they poisoned the well. This has happened time and time again. We saw it with Atheism Plus. We're seeing it in gaming, and it happened in Occupy Wall Street. There's a specific moment where that movement dies, and that is a Stephen Colbert interview. When he has two people on, Occupy Wall Street had the chance to send anybody they wanted to go on national television to tell the American people what the fuck that movement was about. And who did they send? Did they send the most articulate person? Did they send the person who understood their talking points? Did they send the person who knew how to get the message across to mainstream America that, hey, we're out here fighting for what you should be fighting for. No, they sent somebody who came and introduced themselves as ketchup and said they were a female-bodied person. That was the death knell of Occupy Wall Street. When they started introducing things like the progressive stack, when they started fighting for Native American rain dance rights and setting up no rape zones, instead of focusing on what people were there for in the first place, that's when it died. And that is what's happening to social justice. What is social justice accomplishing on Tumblr? It is a fucking joke. It's a laughing stock. And I really want to cement this point. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to read you the craziest fucking thing I can related to ableism. And I want you to really think, is this real or isn't it? It has reached a point of Poe's Law where you can't even tell anymore. So don't Google search it, all right? Don't go and look on a website and see, is this real or not? I want you just to listen. After hearing all the things we've heard from Tumblr about social justice and patriarchy and privilege and all that bullshit, I want you to listen to this. And I want you to honestly ask yourself, is it real or is it fake? This is from xtrung.tumblr.com in a post entitled, Trigger Warning, Singletism, Ableism, Fat shaming. Journey to the Sacred Heart. This is the about section. Jen, 23, cisgendered white female, tortoise skin, disabled, singlet, gainer, vegan, feminist, fat activist, pansexual, demiplatonic, aromantic, asensual, likes, knitting, sewing, cooking, gardening, eating, human rights, animal rights, human animal rights, fat acceptance. Just your average queer, fat, vegan tortoise trying to discover herself. My passions in life are vegan Japanese cuisine and dismantling the hierarchy with my best friend Justice. Justice, 23, gender fluid fab, all pronouns acceptable, racially mixed POC, pansexual but currently abstinent, trans activist, hardcore vegan activist, animal rights, organic raw veganism, former OS, anti-racism, ed recovery, BDP OCD, Likes pranic nourishment, superfoods, animal rights activism, veganism. And this post is from Monday, July 23rd, 2012. Trigger warning. Singletism, ableism, fat shaming, trans fat shaming, cutting doctors, hospital, mental hospital. Jen here. 
Sorry I haven't been posting. I recently suffered a terrible injustice at the hands of a bunch of singlest, ableist bigots. It all started when I was having dinner at my parents' house. My mother inevitably made several cruel remarks about my weight, my veganism, and the amount of food I was eating. She started talking, talking about the possibility of decreasing my food allowance even more or cutting it all together and buying all my groceries herself. Eventually, she told me I needed to see a different therapist as well as a nutritionist because, apparently, purposely gaining weight is insane. According to her, trans fatness isn't real, and I am just addicted to food. I was furious, but I tried to stay calm, for the sake of my headmates, as well as for the sake of my food allowance. Derek was present and listening the entire time. Derek hates the body and resents being trapped in it. He is also very prone to harming it. At some point, I lost control. Derek took over, swore at my mom, then ran to the bathroom. Al Goral, Coralot, Momo, Toshi, and I were present the entire time. Derek found a razor and started cutting. He hadn't bothered to lock the door. My mom found him and wrestled the razor out of our hand while my dad dialed 911. I ended up fronting at the hospital. A lot of what happened is a blur. I tried to explain that I wasn't self-harming and that I'm part of a multiple system. The doctor had no idea what I was talking about and asked my parents if I had been evaluated for schizophrenia. My parents basically told the doctor that I faked DID for attention. The doctor forced me to be put on a 72-hour hold. The mental hospital was a separate hospital, so I had to be taken there in an ambulance. Honestly, don't recall too much about it. Let's just say that the medical and mental health system in our country is deeply, deeply ableist, as well as singleist. I had to lie about my multiplicity, a large part of my identity, just to get out of there. I had to tell my headmates to lay low. They were not allowed to front for 72 hours. If any of them did, we would all have been forced to stay in that prison where we weren't allowed to be ourselves and where some of us weren't even allowed to merely exist. Not only that, but they had me on a reduced calorie diet while I was there. Scoff. No surprise, really. We were released some days ago. The others have been fronting a lot to make up for lost time. My parents are angry at me and insisting that the whole ordeal was just me attention-seeking and taking it too far. They keep telling me that I don't have did, and when I tell them that I in fact do not, that I have what is called natural multiplicity, they tell me I'm making up illnesses. Natural multiplicity is real, and it is not an illness or a disability. I wish they would allow me to educate them about these things since I actually know a lot about them, seeing as I experience them only every day of my life. Yeah, obviously, I've been fighting with my parents a lot more than usual, but they haven't decreased or cut any of my allowances, so I guess I can still handle all the arguing for now. Again, I'm sorry for my absence, but I've been in a bad place, both literally and figuratively, and I have a lot to think about. I should be posting more regularly now. Thank you all for bearing with me. And of course, the tags include singletism, ableism, fat shaming, cutting, self-injury, depression, and OC. Now you tell me, after hearing that, was that fake or was that real? All those terms, all those ideas, headmates and privilege and feminism and activism and all these different sexualities and fronting and multiplicity, we've all heard this before. Fat shaming and trans fat shaming and body positivity and now ableism. And that's what it's going to be associated with from now on, are these other ridiculous concepts. In fact, if anything, ableism is the punchline to the joke, what happens when college students have too much fucking time on their hands? It's simply another way for them to police other people. First by admitting that they've done something terrible, because then they can take the high horse, they can take the high road, and tell you how terrible you are. Because they love to do that. That is their M.O. They infest a movement, they introduce ridiculous ideas to the movement, and then they fucking destroy it. They murder it. They strangle it. And the newest weapon in their arsenal, the newest mace to hit people over the head with, is ableism. It is a buzzword, it is a catchphrase that is meaningless. And you'll see it pushed. Again, ask yourself, why are all these people college-aged? Why are all these people in college? And why are they all using the same terminology? It's coming from a central source. And maybe later on I'll do a video on that, because it might be interesting. But that is ableism. A joke. A stupid, retarded, insane joke.